Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. Yes, this is a boxing and wrestling metaphor, and it's on purpose. We hope to turn you into cage fighters, and uh, we'll explain uh, some of that as well. Uh, with me in uh, the, the the coach playing Angelo Dundee, playing the the grizzled um, um, boxing coach with a cigar between his teeth is Mike Chabet. Welcome, Michael. Sheldon, thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, in, in each corner, uh, as you as you know, you've got the uh, on the one corner is the 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 retailer who uses the chargebacks and expense offsets as revenue centers, and in the other corner, the, the brand owner looking for a way to reduce the expense offsets and knock out their errors in outbound. Uh, processes. Those of you who've worked with RFID uh, or read about it, followed it in the industry, I mean, we uh, it, it brings a value in a whole slew of processing areas, whether it's your packing, whether it's your staging, shipping, receiving, all the way down the line. And in your case, for the retail brand of it, looking for that special edge, where is the best place to put your money to take advantage of the fact you're already tagging your goods for your retail uh, partners? And ha ha you know, what way can we can can you take advantage of this? Are the right items packed? Is the order complete? When did the order ship? Did the right order ship? So many of these kind of questions that could be quantified and that's the, the key there and without walking over and scanning each item for sure but even with each carton one at a time michael you want to talk a little bit about your pain points here yeah the accuracy shipping accuracy is probably the uh, the key roi for a brand owner when they are processing orders for various retailers uh, some of the major retailers that I've met with and spoke with, um, you know, they have a cost. There's an expense to uh, having to handle goods coming in when orders don't match the ASN. And those, those costs and those expenses are pushed upstream. Uh, now, for a brand owner to process that error, even if it's one error a week uh, within the shipping environment, there's a whole cascade of costs that are now um, uh, affected uh, by this process. And by using the RFID, in many cases, we may have 35, 40% of the goods flowing through a supply chain may already be RFID tagged to handle some of the mass mer merchandisers and retail mandates. So since this merchandise is already tagged, we very economically can now use those tags, put those tags to work for ourselves. And what you see me doing here is our lab in West Seneca, we have a high speed flow rail and we're actually running a customer's uh, cartons through the system to establish uh, read rate speed cartons per minute. Uh, and what we're finding is both on the inbound side uh, as uh, merchandise is coming from source, we're catching a lot of errors before they get into the supply chain. And then we're actually uh, capturing anything that happened internally during the pick process to catch those errors before they get out the door. And by doing that, we can stop a lot of the uh, um, error uh, exceptions that have to be handled, invoices, uh, chargebacks, corrections, fixing inventory, uh, just the labor involved, uh, both in terms of the uh, accounting area as well as in logistics and distribution. So even one error a week can have a major impact on cost. And by implementing or using the RFID tags that are already on the garment, uh, we're finding that the ROI can be in a very short period of time. Michael, well, um, you want to share with us uh, so some of what, what, is there such a thing as a typical uh, chargeback or a typical expense offset? 
I mean, I've heard it, sometimes it's a carton, whatever the cost of the carton would be. And sometimes I've actually heard it's the order. Could you um, shed some light on that? Well, yeah, in, in some cases, it actually the whole carton can be considered um, uh, non-payable, if you will. Uh, in those cases, uh, um, you've just basically provided some free goods and now you've actually got to uh, issue a charge back against the invoice against those goods. So it's kind of a double whammy. Um, and in some cases, the order can actually be rejected and returned uh, without a uh, uh, without a uh, an allowance to uh, reship, if you will, so the order can be canceled and returned without uh, without being replenished. So yes, yeah, some of these costs can be quite excessive. Thank you. So one of the uh, areas where uh, they really you you know that's it's really a knockout punch is is you can you validate a pick pack. Uh, at, certainly a pick, um, and, and, and then subsequently a pack uh, uh, versus barcode. There's no comparison, um, and the decision about how to equip uh, your uh, facility, whether it's uh, putting in uh, fixed readers or uh, or to go with the mobile, is really depending on how many people you have on the floor. Whether it's more conducive in your process to bring the material to a, a workstation or a vast station, or whether it's just easier to equip your staff and have your workers go out to the floor and, 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 and conduct the operations. Michael, you have anything to add on this? Well, yeah, if you look at how easy it is to be able to put in a fixed reader to validate either an inbound or an outbound shipment, what I was showing here on the left is uh, happens to be GOH, garments on hangers, um, which lend themselves some other handling issues. But uh, whether it be in carton, flat carton, on conveyor, or GOH, uh, you can see how economical it is to put in a couple of antennas to read the items on the outbound side before it leaves and actually get a status report uh, is the order complete um, before it goes out and actually be confident in uh, the, the, the shipment so that you're not going to see a, a chargeback. Uh, this particular customer who we're representing here, uh, a major retailer that I spoke with actually told me that the chargeback uh, uh, handshaking, if you will, with this particular brand owner went to zero by validating during the pick process and validating on the outbound and catching the errors before they went out the door, they now have a zero uh, chargeback error rate uh, because of a missed pick, missing item, too many items, wrong skew. Um, and that was, uh, that was actually someone telling me that in, a, uh, uh, in an open environment. So that's, uh, that was really exciting to hear. Thank you. Right. This is um, another way to, um, this is where in a fixed infrastructure, if you've got the, uh, if you have a, a conveyors, uh, either on the inbound or on the outbound, the ability to audit every single item in every carton, as opposed to just, you know, picking and, um, um uh, just a, a random or an nth uh carton to examine um you can if, if you can audit every single inbound and validate every single item in every single carton that's outbound it's it's tremendous and then if you come have an exception then you send it off to the vast station but without any slowdown in your existing processes uh, Michael will talk a little bit more about the performance specs here of this solution. Um, you, you get this, this tremendous, uh, uh, you, you get records, you get, uh, uh, like I said, it cuts down on the errors, and, um, and you get a really great picture of what's going on in your uh, facility. 
and can be handled both on the ordered inbound from source, uh, if you take out that outbound, but not only that, and you uh, will re uh, record returns as well because um, you can just interrogate the cartons when they arrive and we can decode the information that's inside the carton without opening it. Michael, you have something uh, to add to this particular? Yeah, absolutely, Sheldon. Because what makes all of this work is the establishment of standards. And the standards in an open environment coming from GS1 in terms of UPC, EPC, SSCC, as you see here on the carton label, and GRAI on some returnable assets. What we're looking at here is we have a standard uh, GS1 uh, 128 barcode on a carton. And on the outbound side, we're able to scan that license plate at very high speed and do a database lookup on what's supposed to be in that carton and who it's going to. And we, with a flash of RF, within about 400 milliseconds, I can read every item in that carton and know exactly what's in that carton as it's passing through. And the key here by using this device uh, is that we're getting somewhere around uh, 300 feet per minute, 18, 20 inches of carton separation, yielding about 30 to 36 cartons a minute, uh, red validated, and, and, and confirmed. Now, as you see, as the cartons come through, we have a red light where that particular carton that came from PAC uh, had a miss item, missing an item, the wrong item, whatever the exception might be, we can actually affect the diverter to divert that box off a line to come around for a second read or send it to a manual validation station to be quickly corrected so it can get back into the supply chain get back onto the trailer which again has uh, there's timing issues there with appointments and so forth uh, rapidly fix the cart and get it onto that trailer where it's supposed to be and then we have the ability of reading items to trailer again using a system similar to this that the actually the correct carton went into the correct trailers uh, so this is uh, this process autonomously uh, has very little cost in it, and the return on investment, as you can see, uh, can be very quick. So what happened is, is that you can correct your uh, get the handle those exceptions in a reasonable uh, time frame. So here's a carton that was diverted off that line. What what was wrong with it? It can be examined at a vast station, and then uh, what's supposed to be inside, and if there's anything special handling, etc., and so forth. Or in this case, the top message: no items of UPC 777 were required for this carton. Please pull them out. And the other thing here, Shelley. Again, that's a window as you see here uh, in this uh, in this in this screen. Uh, I'm actually looking at it uh, by all the uh, GS1 standards. I've got the EPC, the GTIN, and the carton number. So very quickly, if I have a carton, I have a code, a status code. And if the status code comes up and gives me the error code, I know exactly which EPC in that carton very quickly that I can find at the VAS station, again, using the RF technology uh, to take it out, replace it, uh, add to it whatever needs to be done, but it gives me item level visibility to the actual individual piece or part that is the problem issue and allows me to correct that and get that back into the supply chain. All right, and one of our, uh, the, uh, one of these knockout punch things, which is uh, the reason why, you know, it's here, is that imagine being able to cross stock in real time. I mean, that, that whereas you, you know, Currently, if you're not using RFID, you're just guessing. You're guessing that you've got a full carton that came in of the product. Yes, you scan your barcode and you cross dock it. It goes in one door and out the other door. And what do you do? You cross your fingers and hope that it was correct. With the, this, with using RFID to peer inside that carton, you'll get it, you know, basically in real time. And like I said, you can cross stock with confidence, and once again, and again, it's a 
this is how we build the structure that has multiple levels of validation and uses RFID to reduce the chargeback and the ex expense offset, whichever way you want to say it. Hey, Sheldon, we got a, had a pretty good question come in. It's about the read, the, uh, the cage. And so uh, from John, how does the reader identify what is inside the box versus what the outside of the box may indicate? Okay, so the, um, the basic uh, flow process is from your um, ERP system or WMS system, the, there's a, a, a order record is loaded into the software. The order record would have the, the carton ID and when that's printed, either at the factory or wherever. Um, and it'll say, okay, the order was for item number, you know, one, two, three, 12, and item number uh, four, five, six, uh, 16, etc. Okay. And then what the, the, the system actually does, it actually uh, decodes, reads the RFID tags inside the cartons, decodes the EPC code to what the GTIN should be or, or what the GTIN is. And then we, the software is comparing the GTIN that's in the carton to what's supposed to be in the carton based on the original information that was loaded into the system. So, for example, in a, a real-time world, we, uh, one of our customers is a very large, uh, you know, again, different product categories have different characteristics. And in this particular case, the customer has a humongous ma uh, product master file with 300, over 300,000 SKUs, new stock keeping units. And so because they, they refresh it weekly, so once a week, the system is loaded with that master file. So now we know what the GTINs uh, are. And then the, um, every morning they load what they expect to be receiving based on the shipping documents, which cartons are arriving, or if it's outbound, when they run their waves of well, now we're going to process these orders, et cetera, that's also loaded into the system. And that's how it compares to see if the EPC code is matching the GTINs that are supposed to be in there. GTIN stands for Global Trade Item Number, which is a an updated modern version of the UPC, which is the Universal Product Code. Very good. Michael, talk a little bit about this real-time tick validation. On real-time pick validation, this is actually using uh, a various uh, series of screens and uh, user interfaces that on mobile devices in particular uh, allows someone to, uh, by location, be able to find out what's expected to be in that location, what's, what's missing from that expectation, what's there that's not supposed to be there. Um, this is more applicable to maybe non-apparel, you know, apparel, we're working more on a case level, but if I was say into uh, tires or uh, containers or uh, other types of uh, CPG, consumer goods products. Or, uh, or this allows e commerce pick. Or an e-commerce. So this allows me to uh, actually look in certain areas uh, if I'm setting up or staging an area, uh, be able to get visibility very quickly uh, uh, to what is, uh, what is correct and what is not correct as I'm walking through doing a validation of a particular location. We also have, as you can see here, a number of different types of mobile devices. In some cases, we may have some rental companies and some uh, other types of uh, uh, short-term kiosk uh, setups where you wanna take a low-cost device and still be able to take advantage of the RFID uh, tags that are on the assets, if you will, at this point. So these are very similar to a cell phone that you can put into your pocket and it has a very low cost, uh, uh, almost the cost of a barcode verifier. And you can actually move inventory, you can cycle count, you can count all the assets in a particular kiosk. Uh, if there's certain items you're looking for that may be in a, in, in a carton, 
uh, uh, next to the kiosk. Uh, you could use the Geiger counter function. So there's a very low cost of entry and be able to have something you can put into your pocket and still have the ability to go out and use uh, RFID effectively. We have an application called Edge Micro, and Edge Micro is sort of a micro kit that allows you to put one of these things in your pocket and, and, and literally travel around and validate, uh, record, and actually, as soon as you're in a Wi-Fi spot, Wi-Fi the information back to your your host or your server. So there's many different types of hardware that's now available to support the various software solutions that we offer to perform all sorts of different functions and still keeping it down to a very low cost point. I know uh, one of the uh, offerings uh, there, for example, if, uh, if, you do, if you are in your environment, in your enterprise, you allow BYOD, uh, bring your own device, then there are uh, third party uh, Bluetooth RFID sleds that work with an iPhone or an Android phone and uh, use your existing phone. If um, you have the RFID capability and that, you know, can be shared amongst uh, different users and it's a, a quick way to implement uh, uh, giving the people, especially as Michael was pointing out, what if you if you're going in each is to you, you want to run your cycle count well it's it, it's it's 800 times faster than scanning every item but barcode one at a time but you still would like to get the, the process done as soon as possible so you bring in a crew uh, instead of you know five people going through the warehouse to, to cycle count and you uh, it's a very reasonable cost to outfit everybody with these devices Yeah, on the on the returns here, if you if let's say you're not set up with um, a material handling like a conveyor system or something, and you want, um, so you give them a handheld uh, with the uh, you know, Walker reader or one of those other solutions we just discussed with the sled or with the uh, low cost uh, little Android device, but you you scan the the carton whether it's a return or even on low volume shipping and low volume receiving scan the barcode and again it's the same function that's going on at the cage the difference is the cage is, is doing it at high speed at 300 feet per minute here's doing it as fast as you could pull the trigger you scan the barcode when you release your trigger it, where the system reads the contents of the cart um, you can move the that uh, contents of the inventory cycle count and the EPC encoding capability, that's what you need to re-encode a tag is for ad hoc encoding. If your, um, if your tags are being encoded at source. So let's put some of this all together and how you, uh, you know where your pain points are. It's not, you know, there's a, lots of metrics that you can use in terms of what discovering uh, what, what, where are you going to get, where you're going to get the most, the biggest bang for your buck. Uh, and certain people have more trouble packing. Certain uh, businesses have more trouble picking. Maybe it's a, such a such gigantic warehouse, it takes forever for people to walk. Maybe you don't have material handling. Maybe you do. Each, everyone, every flavor is different. And, you know, in other words, what, what, what determines the best performance uh, improvements really it, it, it depends on your unique uh, re requirements but there the, the question to just sit, sit about talk to your operations people talk to your finance people and just ask them which ones are the most important which ones if we could get a better handle on them and then we can see okay now I, I know what my ideal number is and I could like to improve it. And let's see how we can improve it. And, and sometimes, for example, let's say you, you've got 12 pack stations, just, just for the for argument's sake, for discussion's sake. And it seems to, you know, you know, regularly it looks like you should be able to get, let's say 30 you know, cartons an, an hour out from those pack stations in your existing situation, okay? And then, 
uh, but, but one out of the 12 is, 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 is significantly less. For some reason, it's taking that person longer. That person maybe needs more training or something. Uh, or if, um, if we can associate some other information, for example, uh, one of the providers, the hardware providers that we were working with, a company called the uh, Census, Fet, Census, Census um, they've integrated the video into the RFID readers. So now you, you can have a video camera that's watching the pack station. And if you notice, you know what? That worker has to walk around the column to get to a tote to be able to fill his package. Well, you know, that's some actionable information. And with the combination of the two, you, you can you know, really learn, 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 learn some nice insight. But to answer that question, which metrics are most important to you? Almost all of these, we can RFID enable and put a read function in there in some way so that the, at, at various stages in your warehouse process, you'll know when, um, you know, how many cartons are sitting in the, you know, in audit, how many are, are audit is complete, how many are verified, how many are ready to go. So many different areas on the case level, they're received, they're not put away, they're palletized. At each of these stages, those that it can be counted. And then the challenge is to come out and say, hey, which is the most, what's the, what's going to give us the biggest bang for our buck? And the goal, obviously, is to get the most goods out the door. That's the key. Michael, you have any uh, war stories on that, huh? Well, there, there's a, a, a you know, having visibility uh, and being able to uh, take advantage of these locations uh, is, is important. Um, when you're dealing with cartons, uh, you can't see inside of it. Um, granted, you can have things like shirts or shoes packed in the cart in a certain way, uh, but being able to use uh, RFID and, and being not have to open the boxes uh, and being able to move inventory autonomously through through an operation um, is just uh, uh, and accurately you know with with like you say with the dashboard we saw before with the reports and being able to feed uh, existing legacy systems using simple APIs. Um, there, 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 a lot of folks, we, we don't know what we don't know uh, in many cases. So it's, we, we have a number of customers who, because items were already tagged internally, uh, that implemented uh, a few readers in key locations, all of a sudden had visibility to things that were happening within their internal processes that they did not know were happening previously. So you, you start to see things that you normally couldn't see before. And, and, and that's the value that RFID would bring uh, to, to an organization and then linking that in with the existing uh, uh, legacy systems. Right, I mean, if you, if you look here, I mean, you're on a cotton side. So we can tell, we know when something is packed. We know when something is weighed. You know, when it's manifested, when it's on the pallet, when it's loaded on the truck, and when it's shipped. So for each of those, you know, that, that carton, you would have this string of information. And then now we can say, hey, wait a minute, it's, you know what? It's spending too long on pallet. Or, you know, whichever the, uh, once you get a, a feel for what your normal uh, key performance indicators are, yeah, you may have an overzealous packer who wants to get his truck filled to release that truck. He's a carton short and he looks over at someone else's pallet stage to go onto the next trailer, sees a box that he needs, goes over, grabs the box, puts it on his pallet, puts it in the truck, it's gone. Now you've got a pallet that was correct before and now all of a sudden uh, it's missing a carton. So those are the types of things that uh, uh, will become visible that were not visible before. In each uh, of the stages, there it um, from from a, a reasonable 
um, wherever you want to quote unquote get visibility, RFID gives you that. And that's key, That's a real key point as, as Michael you know, points out about the visibility because you can peer in, into the cartons. There are times where uh, in the past you were happy only with, um, like I said before, the scanning that that's the CC 128 on the outside of the serial shipping container code. And now you actually have a better visibility because you know what's going on inside. And how do we do this? How, how can we help you? Well, we have a, a, a number of uh, members of our product platform. Um, a product that's been a, a standard in a number of um, industries for many, many years is a Mark Magic barcode label, uh, electronic forms, and RFID software. This is our output system. It allows you to print and encode uh, labels and tags, and it's uh, very easy to integrate. Runs on a server, actually, also is native on the AS400. And um, it's, it's been around, it's been uh, installed in thousands of customers. On, our, on the passive RFID side is the Edge Management Platform, which is, makes it easy for you to um, add readers, uh, real simple. Um, just as long as you know the IP address of the reader, um, you can uh, add a, a reader to your particular process to a particular point and the system can grow and give you more detail on the history of that particular item or carton as it goes through your facility. And our latest product is a product called Edgefinity IoT, which reads active RFID and ultra wideband and BLE and a number of other uh, technologies where we actually add a third dimension. And that is to be able to locate a tagged object or person in a in space, and it's integrated with mapping capabilities so that you can actually see the particular uh, item that you're looking for wherever it's located in your facility. Oh, one second here. All of our products are web-based and they're platform independent as well as um, Edge Magic and Mark Magic are also available on the AS400. As Michael had put up about the, um, the simple to use APIs, there all of our products have a rich, constantly growing uh, family, for lack of a better term, library of REST APIs. Uh, that allow you to get information, uh, put information. Uh, not not everything that we have is you have to be a programmer. I mean, for example, even with Mark Magic, if you don't want to do a call at all and use the Mark Magic APIs, you can. There's a print monitor function that'll watch on the AS400. It'll watch a physical file, a logical file, a spooled out file, output file. Uh, when a record hits it. The, the, the printing automatically happens and the label spits out. Uh, on the um, platform independent side, you just uh, have a subdirectory in a file server or anywhere really, and we'll wa wa watch that. And as soon as a record appears in that subdirectory, boom, we'll process the record and and print. On the um, on the Edge Magic side. You can use this the uh, product independently. It's got reports. It's got various uh, abilities to export the RFID data into Excel. It's built into the reporting uh, process. But to do some the tighter integration, you take advantage of these APIs that allow you to um, get the inventory from a reader or from a location and, and actually share the information back and forth with the Edge Magic system. This is a particular, um, to, to, to those of you who are programmers will understand the syntax. It's industry standard. It's a RESTful API, it's called. And we have a, quite a few of them to 
help you achieve your objectives. And that ends our presentation. Uh, I see we have some questions. Uh, let's see, this is one. How do you de determine the 30% improvement in orders? Well, let me handle that one, Sheldon. Uh, we have a uh, we have a number of customers who have established anywhere between uh, 30 to 50 pack stations to be able to handle uh, seasonal flow of orders and uh, off, on season and off season. On season, you're adding more people to the line to get more orders out, and then the on the off seasons, you, you remove the temps and uh, you're now using maybe 15 of the pack stations. When you move from a barcode environment, if you're using barcode to validate uh, the pick pack and going into carton, uh, there's uh, two hands involved for the operator. There's a process involved, uh, finding the barcode, hitting the barcode with the red light. If you know you have five of them going into the carton, do you take one item and scan it five times? and throw everything in the box, or do you scan each one? Uh, if you're able to use RFID in that process, now all I have to do is I have my carton, I have my screen, I know it's supposed to go in that box based upon a standard, and I've got a, a UCC-128, a GS-1-128 going on that box, so I've pre-allocated pick to carton. So now all I have to do is grab a handful of what I'm packing, pass it past the antenna and put it in the box. Instantaneously, I get a visibility on the screen of everything I just moved in batch, in bulk to the carton versus handling each one individually. So how does that impact my business? Uh, I now have more cartons per hour. So if I can do that and eliminate a third of the time it takes to find the tag, read the barcode, put the scanner down, or, 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 or fold, the, fold the, the sleeve back in the bag or whatever it is and put it in the box. If I'm saving 30% on each item as I'm passing through, now I can take a look at my season. And do I need all 50 pack stations running? Or can I get away with 36 stations running? because I now have a 30% improvement in cartons per hour, uh, I don't need to throw manpower at it. So very quickly, by using the tag that's already there during my pick process, I now already have uh, cost savings in my packing process. And at the same time, by validating, I've eliminated my uh, uh, chargeback situation that we spoke about earlier. So you can see there's a two-handed punch. There's one on the chargeback and then there's the accuracy and the speed by which I can fill cartons to order and get those, get those cartons out the door by reducing the amount of manpower and still getting the same cartons per hour. Very good, thank you, Michael. Here's another question for you. Um, if the items are need to be pre-tagged in the carton before the carton is sealed, how do you know that the right items are in the carton? This goes back to the original tagging. How do we know that the product is tagged correctly? Well, that's the whole value of the inbound audit and that we spoke about earlier, typically using the cyber cage or the handheld device when the cartons are first coming in. If I can capture that tagged error, and that's one of the things we found that a number of key brand owners is that items coming from source can be mistagged. So if we validate on the inbound side, we can catch the mistagged items before we have our inventory in an imbalanced state. Our inventory is not balanced because the items are tagged wrong, but we don't know it. We don't know what we don't know. And it's only by reading the items as they're coming in and validating that the order's correct and then being able to identify the item that's the exception and finding out that the items have been mistagged mis or mis uh, uh, no tag or uh, too many tags on one item. 
uh, we have a number of uh, uh, exceptions that we've had we've, we've been we've had visibility to on validating on the inbound side. Now, once you validate on the inbound side, you're not going to have that issue on the outbound side, unless for some reason another exception where someone tears a tag off or some other um, uh, uh, situation occurs that, that, that that's not expected. But uh, by validating inbound and doing this on the outbound, and that's why that major retailer came to me and said this particular brand owner went to zero chargebacks by doing this process. He, here's another question, I'll take it. And that is, is that how, what's the best way to, um, to validate in an e-commerce uh, uh, situation? So the, um, I mean, we were at a customer where it's very famous uh, uh, website and catalog operation. And they've got a pretty extensive uh, setup where they are doing validation with the barcode and what each of uh, the order is packed. It goes into a conveyor. There's maybe about eight or 10 pack stations around the conveyor. It's not a big, not in a very large uh, pack, packing area. But then what happens is there are three chutes, for lack of a better term, for one for FedEx, one for UPS, and one for the United States Postal Service. And um, when it when it gets to the end of that line, there they had a, a human operator who's throwing it into the chute. So we put in a system where we tag the order and we're validating it, and it uh, and we make sure it goes into the right chute that way. In other words, they, he, he's still doing the throwing. So there was no automated system putting in, but if he throws the wrong package into the chute, uh, uh, a lightness iron goes off and prevents that. So this way, it was just one reader that was put in. It wasn't a very extensive uh, implementation, but we're able to validate a whole room full of, of, of packers uh, uh, for, the, for, the, for this uh, website. Are there any others there, Phil? Yeah, we got some basic ones. Uh, here's a real straightforward one. How do you measure ROI, just overall? That's from Megan. Okay. Well, thank you, Megan. Oh, the uh, straightforward one is uh, you go speak to your folks in accounting and say, how much did so-and-so charge us last year? Total up all your expense offsets. What was that chargeback number? And people are, they, you know, they, on one hand, you say it's the cost of doing business. And listen, some of them are not going to be uh, improved by RFID. If you were supposed to put it on a hanger and you didn't, if it was a wrong color hanger or something like that, or if you had an accounting issue. Obviously, those expense offsets are still going to occur, but the ones where the uh, where you made a mistake and sent out the wrong goods, you're going to have a number for that, and it could be, you know, it may be, maybe you're only doing one percent of errors, but if you're a big enough operation, one percent could be ten million dollars or you know a significant chunk of change, and the that's where once you have that number, you actually have your budget, and meaning that. The so the we've seen ROI anywhere from six months to two three years max. It's it's it because it's based on that number. By cutting that number down, that customer that Michael referred to before, that brand owner, he went from he went to zero. So he basically that that was such a, a positive impact to his bottom line that the that his um so he not only cut down on the cost but he also made the full sales that he was uh, planning on, uh, on on getting, right? That was the, what, the, what the original plan was. So it, it actually gave him a double boost, both a reduction in the cost as well as a an increase in sales, which far, you know, offset the uh, initial investment in the, in the system. Very Any good. others, Phil? Yeah, I see we're creeping up on, on an hour. So I'll give you this one as we get quite often. How do you suggest we get started? All right. Well, we, um, Michael, you want to talk a little bit about how to pilot, how to how, how to uh, uh, roll out from a pilot to, and then take it to production. Well, there's there's a number of uh, uh, prerequisites we have to take into consideration uh, before we implement, and one is are the items being source tagged today? 
do I have items coming through that are already tagged? What percentage of that? So if it's already coming in, it's very easy to put together uh, uh, a set of readers and antennas uh, at key points and start establishing uh, uh, some, some metrics, if you will, uh, whether it be receiving or put away or QC or whatever it might be. If you don't have any RFID today, the best way to do it is on the inbound side. When you're receiving, you've got to handle it, receive it anyway, typically in a manual process. Uh, so at that point in time, if it's barcoded, do a scan and encode with an RFID tag during the receiving process and start that value there. Uh, if you have vendors that are you're working with, the other the uh, um, contractors and so forth, and they're barcode for you for you today, well, it'd be very easy for us to move that barcode and add an RFID quotient to that barcode in that process. And by putting uh, our solution in a cloud environment, if you will, your vendors, your your customers can start to uh, dial in and start generating tags at source and RFID tag uh, these items. So now when you receive them, you're receiving them much more quickly. Uh, you're receiving them accurately. And by doing so, you can reconcile the invoice quicker. So in working with your sources and having them add the RFID component to their existing labeling schema, uh, they'll get paid quicker. And when you get your money quicker, when you get paid quicker, there's an ROI there as well. So there's a lot of benefit in doing that. And typically in phases, you'll do a phase one first. You're, you'll find that one area where it takes a lot of manual effort to handle and to, to, to read and to, to check off and verify. And you start there. And then you can start pushing back. And as you see, we can actually move with passive RF and actually mix that with some active tags. So if I have transport mechanisms, I have pallets, I have carts, if you will, I can put an active tag on the cart, associate passive item to active cart and get visibility on the screen that we're looking at and actually seeing it move through the facility. If I was like, like a museum where I have some high value assets and certain times I need to seek and find a specific piece of art, it's very difficult to find that. Uh, if I'm moving art from one facility to another, one location to another, I can put that on a, on a transport device with an active tag and actually watch that move. So there's uh by by mixing a lot of this technology starting with a phased one get 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 let's let's get your feet wet first let's let's get this the items tagged and let's get that initial benefit and that initial visibility and then once we become comfortable with that light bulbs will go on and they'll actually show us where we would like to add that capability to other parts of our business thank you